Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hi everybody, uh, this is Dr. Ravindra Maradi, Associate Professor in the Department of Biochemistry, Kasturva Medical College, Manipal. Uh, in this lecture, I will be talking about fate of absorbed glucose and its preferential use in fat and fasting condition. So basically what I am uh, discussing is <coughs> what happens to the glucose when you are in well fed condition in different tissues and uh, in case of fasting condition. First thing is uh, whenever the liver takes the major glucose that is uh, presented to it by fortal blood around 60 percent of glucose is uh, taken up by the liver. Uh, then uh, once the glucose enters into any cell the glucose is first trapped it is acted upon by the glucokinase or hexokinase enzyme and puts a phosphate on that. Once the phosphate is added to the glucose, the glucose 6-phosphate that is formed cannot go out of the cell. That means that glucose is trapped in the cell and whatever is further fate that has to undergo in the same cell. So this the first step uh, uh, inside any cell is very, very important. The glucose can go in and out of the membranes but not glucose 6-phosphate. That is why the cells what they do first thing is they put a phosphate and trap that glucose into glucose 6-phosphate. For that uh, we have different glucose transporters in different uh, tissues but in case of uh, liver the glucose transport is not affected by the insulin. The insulin is not required to take up the glucose in the liver. Once the glucose comes in and uh, it is uh, a phosphate is put on that and glucose is converted into glucose 6-phosphate and then that glucose 6-phosphate undergoes glycolysis to form pyruvate then it is an enzyme in the mitochondria like uh, pyruvate dehydrogenase and converts that one into acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA enters TCA cycle and it is uh, uh, catabolized to release energy and converts into carbon dioxide and water. <coughs> the other fate of uh, this glucose 6-phosphate, the excess glucose once the enough energy is produced by this pathway, so the excess glucose is stored as glycogen in the liver to be utilized during the fasting conditions and uh, some amount of glucose is also shunted to hexose monophosphate shunt pathway where we produce uh, NADPH which is utilized for some of the uh, synthetic pathways. Also ribose 5-phosphate is also synthesized in this pathway so uh, uh, some amount is diverted to this. Okay, this is what happens to the glucose in a well fed condition in the liver. Primarily it is used as energy and then it can be stored and part of that it also enters into HMP shunt pathway. What happens in case of adipocytes? Adipocytes also take up this glucose in the adipocytes and muscles it is the dependent on the insulin. The transporters are dependent on insulin. Once the glucose comes inside the cell it undergoes the same fate and the phosphate is put on that and then glucose 6 phosphate undergoes glycolysis to form pyruvate then pyruvate is converted into acetyl-CoA, acetyl-CoA is burnt in TCA cycle to get energy. The other fate is glycerol glucose 6 phosphate can be converted into glycerol 3 phosphate and this glycerol 3 phosphate backbone is used to uh, join with the fatty acid to form triacyl glycerol. This fatty acids are synthesized in the liver and this is fatty acid is synthesized with the excess glucose in the liver glucose undergoes glycolysis acetyl-CoA and then acetyl-CoA is converted into fatty acid and that is uh, transported to the uh, liver by 
triacylglycerol in the form of triacylglycerol and then it is uh, in the adipocyte it is broken down and the free fatty acids is, is combines with this glycerol 3 phosphate to form triacylglycerol. Then in the skeletal muscle the glucose taken up by the skeletal muscle same fate it is undergoes put on a phosphate on this and then glucose 6 phosphate undergoes glycolysis pyruvate is formed then it is converted to acetyl CoA and burnt in TCA cycle to release the energy. Here in skeletal muscle that glucose is also stored in the form of glycogen similar to the liver but the purpose of storage of glycogen is different in skeletal muscle. In skeletal muscle the glycogen is utilized for its own use during the muscular contraction whereas the glycogen stored in the liver that is used to maintain blood glucose level during hypoglycemic condition during fasting condition. In the brain what happens glucose is not stored but uh, it is utilized to give the energy same fate as the other tissues like glucose undergo converted into glucose 6 phosphate then convert undergoes glycolysis to form pyruvate then it forms acetyl CoA by pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme then it enters the TCA cycle and it is burnt in the TCA cycle to release carbon dioxide and water and the energy is captured in the form of reducing equivalents like NADH and H plus and FADH2 they enter into TCA cycle to give the energy. That is what happened in the different tissues when we are well fed when there is enough blood glucose. So, in the other way if it is in a fasting condition we are not taking anything through the mouth so the blood glucose level drops in this condition it is sensed by the pancreas and glucagon that is the hyperglycemic hormone is released and what it does in the liver what happens the glycogen that is stored in the well fed condition is broken down here to form glucose 6 phosphate and then it gives glucose. So, this pathway is called glycogenolysis. Glycogenolysis takes place to give the glucose. This glucose helps to maintain blood glucose level and this is used especially for RBCs and brain tissues are used. But as uh, the glycogen store is not too much in the liver a limited amount of glycogen is stored. So, there is an another alternative pathway that is active in the liver is gluconeogenesis that is synthesis of neo means new and genesis means synthesis. Synthesis of new glucose from non carbohydrate sources like amino acids, glycerol and lactate. These molecules they enter this gluconeogenetic pathway and they help in synthesizing glucose and this glucose is used by the tissues which are dependent only on glucose. And what is happening in adipocytes is the stored energy form that is triacylglycerol is broken down into glycerol and fatty acid. This is called lipolysis is taking place and then this glycerol can be used as a one of the substrate for gluconeogenesis in the liver. So, glycerol goes to the liver and enters in gluconeogenetic pathway to form glucose whereas, free fatty acids are released and they are taken up by the liver undergoes beta oxidation to produce acetyl CoA. Acetyl CoA enters into TCA cycle to give energy and the other excess acetyl CoA's are also converted into ketone bodies and that ketone bodies are sent into blood and those are utilized by different tissues like heart, brain and in uh, uh, kidneys and other tissues or uh, the tissues which have mitochondria they use that uh, ketone bodies as a source of energy. So, what is happening in skeletal muscle is in fasting condition the proteins are broken down proteolysis takes place and amino acids are released and this amino acids undergo uh, de uh, deamination and the carbon skeletons they are utilized for the gluconeogenetic pathway. 
the amino acids glucogenic amino acids are enters into gluconeogenic pathway and glucose is synthesized. This gluconeogenesis is taking place in the liver. And in uh, brain, the gluconeogenesis and the glucose that is produced by gluconeogenesis and glycogenolysis. These two pathways are taking place in the liver. Okay. Glycogenolysis is breaking down that stored glycogen in the liver, whereas gluconeogenesis is new glucose synthesis in the liver. These two, they are produced, they give the glucose uh, uh, to, in the to maintain blood glucose level and taken up by the brain because it is one of the important organ. So, in the initial period, it is dependent only on glucose and brain and RBCs, they use this glucose and glucose is burnt in the glycolysis to form pyruvate. Pyruvate sees that PDH enzyme, pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme in the mitochondria to form acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA is burnt in the TCA cycle to give energy. And kidney also participates in the very prolonged fasting conditions, in starvation conditions. Kidney becomes the major enzyme. Up to 40 percent of glucose is synthesized in kidney in the prolonged starvation conditions, where the non carbohydrate sources like amino acids, lactate, glycerol are used to synthesize the glucose by the gluconeogenetic pathway. In the earlier period of fasting condition, liver is the major and uh, so uh, site for synthesis of glucose by the gluconeogenesis, whereas in prolonged fasting condition and starvation conditions, kidney also takes that uh, uh, bulk of glucose is synthesized in the kidney. To summarize, we discussed about the fate of this glucose in felt fed condition that is in when the glucose level is enough high in the body. So, we saw in different tissues what happens to generally if you, you can to, to tell this as if the high glucose is there first thing it is any tissue it utilizes for its uh, energy purpose and uh, then uh, in some tissues like uh, liver and uh, muscle the excess glucose is stored in the form of uh, glycogen and in some tissues okay it is stored uh, uh, as uh, lipid also glucose can be converted into lipid it is in fasting condition and uh, we do not have enough glucose and glucagon is released and uh, that stored glycogen from the liver is uh, released to maintain the blood glucose level. Then another pathway kicks in in uh, fasting condition that is gluconeogenesis from non carbohydrate sources and also the lipolysis also taking place to maintain the energy level of the body. I hope this lecture will help you to understand the uh, use of glucose in fed and fasting condition. Thank you.